a new day and we currently find ourselves in Vatican City. We came here by metro and if you are coming by metro you have to make sure you have this face mask and even entrance here you won't get in otherwise. It's so massive I mean we literally just took one step in and um, we're very confused where we are but we definitely need a map and we don't have one. But we just went ahead of ourselves and we saw this place. I have no clue what it is but we'll see in a second and there's the fountain right behind me. Can you see it? There we go. Let's go explore. So what you guys saw is basically a museum that went from the Egyptian times, so around 1000-2000 BC, to then after 280 to the Roman era. So first of all, it showed obviously the mummification process. So how it worked? It worked like this. Once someone died, the first thing that they did is they, um, they had to excavate the body, so they had to take away all of the internal organs. They took away all of the internal organs, including the brain, except for, um, but they didn't conserve the brain. So they put all of the other organs into these pots, these jars, and they conserved them too. And they didn't conserve the brain just because they thought that the center of the body was the heart, as it was obviously in charge of the emotional and physical well-being of the body. So they conserved that in the heart, but not the brain. And the, obviously the, they, them having to extract the organs took them around 70 days. Then they gave the body to the priest. The priest then added this salt in order to dehydrate the body, in order to conserve it, which lasted 40 days. And then after that, they bandaged it up. And that's how mummification worked. It was a very long process. Um, and it was very popular in order, because they liked to conserve bodies um, in that era. And then they put it in the tomb and that was it. Also, they buried um, the mummies with obviously gold and stuff like that so it wasn't so that's why they stole a lot in that era and that's what you guys saw which is basically a square where all of the popes initially held their statues or collections of statues and then it was used as a tree garden where it farmed oranges and there's some orange trees right over there <laughs> which was done in the 1700s and the reason that it was done like this was because he found mosaics um, aging back from the 4th century which imitated 
the battle between centaurs and the Greeks. And we can walk on it today. And look at the roof. Come la pioggia scivola, come un bambino rotola, sai farlo eppure tu. Prendila e stringila, è un'emozione candida. Socchiudi gli occhi e immagina il sole che tramonta. Ed una vela che è già gonfia di blu Lascia che evapori Se un'emozione frigida La sigaretta spegnila E riporta gli occhi in su Dalla finestra Okay, so now we find ourselves outside in St. Peter's Basilica. Oh my god, it looks insane. And so right then we have the basilica and then we have the surrounding columns around it and each of the columns have a statue. There's a fountain right over there. <laughs> and it looks insane. In a second, as soon as we're going to get out of the basilica, it's going to be dark. So you guys are going to be able to see the comparison between day and night. So first of all, and going into the Vatican. The Vatican I do 100% recommend. Me and mom got our tickets um, online, which I do recommend getting. And it costs 26 euros each, worth every single penny. Trust me, you should definitely go. It's quite a, um, it's a very long, long um, trip, but if it's raining, I guess that will be, the uh, Vatican is the best day to do it because it's mostly inside. Obviously, here the square is outside, but everything else is mostly inside. So go on a day where the weather isn't the best. And yeah, so I'll show you guys close-ups of each of the statues. It's the next day and we find ourselves near the Spanish Steps. So, Spanish Steps are here, this fountain right over there, and you have a beautiful view through the alley. Um, so, the Spanish Steps is actually illegal to sit on them. Um, that is because Bulgari, they renovated the Spanish Steps and then they decided that you can't sit on them. <laughs> so you can only take pictures and there's police right over there controlling everything at the moment. So even if you do sit down or try and eat, they'll tell you to leave. Uh, which is very cool, but yeah, it's actually so beautiful. So you have the steps here and on the other side you have this beautiful building Well, you have this side and then the building. Let me just go back a sec There we go It's a palm tree <laughs> So yeah, this is what we have so today 
after we go to the Spanish service, we have tickets bought for the Pantheon. Um, it costs us eight euros each to buy the tickets, which is not that bad. Um, and then we're gonna go to see the Fountain di Trevi. And then we have to go home, but it's such nice weather today that the pictures are gonna turn out really nice. And it's just really nice to, you know, to travel in this type of weather. But yeah, let's go see what mom is. Let me wait, I don't wanna go. Okay. See, this is the thing, when I see people take pictures, I wait a sec, because I'm nice. Um, but yeah, let's go see what's in front of us. We're guessing it's just another basilica because this church is everywhere here. Like honestly everywhere. Oh look at let's see from the view. From the balcony. Oh my god. Look. Right behind me is obviously the Fountain di Clevi. Uh, we're actually going to Pantheon right now, but I just wanted to say, if you drink the water from the fountain, you're meant to be more, uh, more loyal to your significant other. So, some of you, you guys need to help start get a drink because what some of you guys do is a madness, I can't lie. <laughs> but yeah, so now we're just gonna go to the Pantheon. It's a, nine minute walk yeah it's a nine minute walk and then eight minute walk and then we'll show you guys what's there but honestly the architecture of the fountain is gorgeous gorgeous Festival entry is free, and I just paid seven euros for absolutely nothing. Um, but here you have the dome shape. So the dome shape is used. So you know when you have rain, right? Right now, um, if it rains, the um, the actual pantheon it has a concave shape. So the rain just glides off into the 22 holes, and um, so it just goes into a water system and drainage system. However, um, during the Roman times, it was said that the, not, it never rains in the Pantheon because it looked like that was the case. However, um, it did, <laughs> but you just never saw it because at the time they never had electricity and everything was lit up by candles. So the heat from the candles dissipated upwards and by the time it reached to the dome, um, the water, it evaporated the water, so the water actually never went inside. So that's why it was said to be that it never rains here, but it did. But like, you couldn't see it. <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of tombs. There's a tomb of a king over there. Wait, let's see. Oh, there we go. This one. And that was um, the design of the king. The, tomb, the design of the tomb was won by competition. And yeah, that's how it is. It's really gorgeous. Also, the base of the Pantheon is six meters wide. However, as you go up, it gets thinner. So the top is two meters wide. Um, and yeah. Okay, so outside we just left um, the Pantheon and we just wanted to get some coffee or I'm getting hot chocolate. Mom's getting, what are you getting? She's also getting hot chocolate ice cream. However, 
This place is definitely a tourist trap. It's so expensive. I'm paying seven euros for a hot chocolate, but I'm way too tired to actually do anything else. Okay, so we just took pictures and we understand now why the prices are insane, but it's fine. The ice cream is insane, but I took lemon and it's very... <laughs> yeah. But it's actually really good. I, I, when I say that, when I do a place like that, it's very sour, but I love sour food. So yeah. <laughs> Mama, what do you think? Mama? My ice cream is perfecto. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.